Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to my stream. We'll get a little more light on me. We'll crank up the brightness here. There we go. Nice to be back in my studio. My studio. Oh, is that loud? It's probably loud. Well, you know, you didn't become a, I don't know. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, we'll, we'll let we'll let non-subscribers talk for a little bit. Welcome to Saturday. Welcome to my stream. Welcome everybody. If you're new here, my name is George. I have a stream. Uh, I heard Elon wants to be a streamer, so you know, it's cool to be a streamer, and that's why I'm a streamer. I googled how to be cool and it was like be a streamer and I was like wow no way I could just be cool if I'm a streamer uh, what are we doing today we are doing some refactoring of tiny grad but first we're responding to comments we're responding to comments okay uh, you know just so you know if you leave comments part. about me uh, I read them all right. Uh, because comments are the best way for people to honestly tell you what they think about you, uh, which is which is a really which is a really cool thing. Uh, I did love this. I did love this this C.S. Lewis quote. Uh, of all tyrannies, a tyranny exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive. It is better to live under robber barons than omnipotent moral busybodies the robber baron's cruelty may sometimes sleep his cupidity may at some point be satiated but those who torment us for our own good will torment us without end for they do so without the approval of their own conscience see i heard it once described as the difference between an overbearing mother and an overbearing father an overbearing father says clean your fucking room or i'll beat your ass you go clean your room an overbearing mother wants you to clean your room and enjoy it. And that is tyranny, my friends. That is tyranny. Um, but where did... Uh, oh, George needs to take a sociology uh, philosophy class. Uh, now, no, 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 no. I read, I read another comment this morning that I think uh, kind of dovetails into this. Uh, and it was about, I can't bring up Twitter because I have to log in, but it, it's from Utah uh, Teapot. And uh, I really don't understand how transhumanism turned into techno-optimism and EACC and in the process became antagonistic to trans people. All right, all right, hot button issue, hot button issue. Look, all I'm gonna say is this, wokeism and trans people have, as far as I know, nothing to do with each other. Right? Don't don't conflate hating wokeism with hating trans people, okay? And nobody should conflate those things. Who do I who do we really hate? Who do we really hate when we talk about hating wokeism? Right? Who do we hate? There is definitely someone we hate. Who do we hate? Oh yeah, yeah, we're doing this. We're doing this. Who do we hate? Disney? Yeah, that's closely related. We do hate stupid people and idiots always. Uh, companies, the PMC, but who is at the root of all of this? Who is at the root of all of this wokest ideology? I'll give you guys a hint. Not George Soros and not D cells. It is the university system. Our war is with Harvard. Our war is with the, the Ivy League educational institutions in this country that create the PMC. Not with trans people, okay? 
It's important to understand this, right? Most of the woke people I hate are ultra-privileged white fucks who graduated Harvard. Not to be racist, but it's true. Uh, so you know that's just that's just something that's just something we gotta uh, we gotta and also also if you are in a quote unquote as they would call it marginalized group, uh, I may say that you may not want to ally yourself with these fucking idiots, right? Like, if I was in some marginalized group, right? Like, I don't know, man. Look, I'm Irish, right? If I was in some marginalized group and some some ultra-privileged fox, privilege is good, privilege is good, who, who've been at these universities running society for the last hundred years have now decided to make me their focal point, I'd be like, fuck you. Uh, so that's the real, that's, that's important to uh you know understand right so when you know to bring it back george needs to take a sociology philosophy class put out by who harvard they are the enemy now you can analyze my psychology and be like george this is just because you got rejected from college and now you're taking it out on the colleges and the answer is absolutely they shouldn't have rejected me and they will pay uh so yeah that's that's where we're going with 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 this uh but yeah yeah, yeah. so so you know uh, look i don't have influence don't listen to me but like yes yeah, don't hate fucking trans people man hate wokeism hate institutionalized wokeism hate gm deciding that they need to get a chief diversity officer right who's also an ultra privileged white fuck but don't worry they're doing it for the they're doing it for the good of the minorities or something or other right that and if you're in an underprivileged group don't Listen to these people. They want to keep you trapped in a victim mentality, man. They want to tell you that you're a victim, right? And then once you're a victim, only they can be your savior. And that's what keeps you. Who's going to be the most loyal lapdogs of the fucking failing regime, right? That's the thing. That's exactly why they're doing it, right? So I want you to think about that. And if you have loyalty to the regime, realize that the regime is scamming you. And fuck the regime, and down with down with Harvard, down with the professional managerial class, and up with the cyber truck, cyber truck man, cyber truck. It's it's steer by wire. It's cool, uh, and that's where we are. Uh, where we are looking. Ah, uh, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, hey, would I buy one? Maybe. Uh, but yeah, no, seriously, seriously, bros, don't, don't, don't fall for it, right? If, if you think, like, you're gonna, like, like, you know, hate on the underprivileged, right, to get back at the, no, 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 hate on Harvard, right? Hate on these people, right? They're not, they're not, no, 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 If you went to an Ivy League school like that, and it's not even, look, you might be a victim, man. You might even be a victim who went to Harvard. And I mean a genuine victim, right? Not a victim in victimology 101. I mean a genuine victim, right? Like you didn't know, man. You thought Harvard was good. I mean, you were foolish, but you didn't know, right? And you can be forgiven. But who can't be forgiven? The guy in Atlas Shrugged, the professor. You know, that is who Ayn Rand uh, really reserved her disdain for. And that is absolutely right. The man who should have known better, but did not. And those are the people who will be punished the most harshly when the regime falls. All right. All right. Oh, we got a hype train going. See, you guys love this shit, man. You guys love this shit. Um, <laughs> Dude, no. Fuck commies, man. Fuck commies. Like, communism is not what you think it is, right? Like, and there's, communism's maybe the biggest scam, right? Communism's like, oh, I'm a peasant. I'm going to get on board with communism. You starve to death, okay? Like, you starve to death. The workers of the world don't unite. They, the professional managerial class scams the workers into supporting themselves, and you get Stalin, okay? You don't get, you don't get communist paradise. You get Stalin, right? Right? But, the, oh, don't work us. The, no, okay, okay? Right? What sort of idiot supports com I don't look. All right, all right, all right. We're going off on commies now. Everyone already hates commies, right? Um, <laughs> oh, anarchy is, anarchy is even stupider, right? Anarchy is even stupider than communism. At least communism, like, they try. Like, you want anarchy? You can go to Somalia. Can't believe I got somalia in that debate, man. Can't believe I got Somalia right, but no, you no. So stop hating. Uh, target your hate at at the the 
the professional managerial class, the administrators, the, the, the people who, who push this shit to prevent you from pointing at where the real uh, sources of power are in this country. No, 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 you don't understand. I No, no, Nancy Pelosi wearing a Kent AI. All right, all right, we're not going, we're not going there. We're not going there, but like, fuck you. And the regime is gonna fall. Look at Elon going off on the advertisers. Based Elon, based Elon, all right. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. uh, there's no communism in the world anymore. All right, now look, 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 look. Um, should I replace the rolls with a cyber truck? But it's electric, and then I gotta charge it. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready for a. Uh, Oh, wait, Amaranth? Is that, is that the real Amaranth? No, that can't be the real Amaranth. The real Amaranth is in my channel? No way, man. She's famous. Um, someone just gifted her a sub. Wow, wow, the simping is strong, man. This is a Sky Breeze simp channel. We've been over this. Um, whenever you guys hit her up, tell, tell Sky Bree that I, she's always welcome on my channel. I'll buy another chair. I'll buy another chair. She can come sit here. We can refactor Tiny Grad together. Uh, not paying for porn. I, I mean, I'd be happy to pay for porn if it was actually better. Uh, I'm not one of those, like, like, moral, like, high ground, like, but bro, I'm not going to pay for your OnlyFans if I can Google OnlyFans leak, bro, you know? Hmm. The reasons to remove NumPy. Religion, communal harmony, communism, everyone dead. That that sounds right. Uh, Forbes put out a hit piece on Beth Jesus, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh. All right, all right, we can't go too much on hating. Like, you can hate all the journalism people, but, like, love and hate are really closely related. The real thing to just do is stop clicking, right? That's how you really beat these people. Like, I don't know. I don't read the news, man. I'm proudly uninformed. Who's at war with who? I don't know, man. I don't know. Be proud to be uninformed. Yeah, that's how you beat the news, man. Like, if, 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 if there's a lot of propaganda... The only way to avoid propaganda is to be like, man, no, I don't know. I didn't read that shit, man. I didn't read, but, 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 no, 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 no. It doesn't matter who you are. You think the other side's getting propagandized. They think you're getting propagandized. The only way to beat this is not to read the propaganda and to just read this book. It's actually, it's a great book. You guys should, you guys should, you guys should read this great book. Uh, not for sale in the USA, but I bought it here. I don't know how that happened. Lot of alpha and not caring, yeah. Okay, um, now that we have B propaganda, okay. Subscribers only, let's program. So, I did a big refactor. We're gonna try a refactor stream. I know like these are like boring because they're not new stuff and they don't get as many views. Um, so that's why we started off today's stream with a spicy political rant because that will get people viewing and now you come here and watch actually really boring refactoring of tiny guy so i did a big refactor i wrote this new file beautiful.py and that's what we're going to be working on um so this goes through like the four layers of abstraction in tiny grad and adds uh two plus three in each one of them so this is like the base level with the device runtimes. Um, this is one layer higher uh, with the like buffers and lazy ops. This is at the lazy buffer level and this is at the tensor level. Uh, so we're gonna do this to do, remove D types from allocators. I started working at it, on it at the coffee shop this morning. So 
So part of the problem and one of the banes of my existence is images. So there's two kinds of uh, memory objects in OpenCL. Uh, there's buffers and images. And you have to use images here. I'll show you guys why. Wow, we're educating today. I must be in a good mood. Um, so this is like, this is the chip that's in the comma three. Uh, you can see that the texture L1 cache has double the bandwidth of the local memory. Uh, and I think it's even worse than this. Like I think for some reason this can be accessed better, but see the keyword here is texture. So there's two kinds of objects in OpenCL, there's buffers and textures. The buffers use, uh, use this. Oh, interesting, Molly has a smaller texture cache. Oh, wait, no. they both have smaller texture cache and has slightly more memory. I tried it on the mollies and buffers were fine, but uh, on the adrenos, you need images. So that's why we have to have images. But I went way too far with this and passed in the D types to all the allocators. And then I have this junk everywhere, size times D time item size. So we're going to remove the D type from the allocator. Um, so let's start there just by removing that. Is this going to work? I don't know. Uh, then I have this other function cast image, which converts the buffer into an image. Uh, we can actually say this returns cl.cl. So is this. So unfortunately we have this stupid hack and device to deal with this, where if the type is image D type, we create a, I can move this to here. I'm gonna call this row pitch bytes. Say D type dot item size here. All right, now we have to go through and hopefully make one of the last changes we'll ever have to make to the allocators because there's so many of them. But of course, that's probably not true. But you can see my allocator here, so we're just gonna go here with size. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna get rid of that. Um, cool. So we have this LRU allocator. We can no longer index that on D types. So part of the problem with, so think of what an LRU allocator is, right? It just keeps all the things around. Um, so if I have a D type, think about it. Now the cache is more likely to hit, which is actually kind of stupid. It didn't really matter. But the key thing is, is if you allocate a bigger buffer, you can use it as a smaller buffer. Um, so that's kind of cool. Right, so get rid of that. Look at how much simpler this is making all the code. And then we have an implementation of an allocator here. It's just called malloc allocator. Uh, so we are going to need to change buffer. If allocator now takes in this we're gonna have to put this here like that and we can call three without the d type oh
like that this can take in an opaque. I'm upset about that, right? So, okay, I have a buffer, it takes in a device, a string, a size, and a D-type. I don't like that this can take that in. I can show you where it's used if you care. Um, does this stuff make any sense or am I moving too fast? So here we'll take the D-type out of here. It's just like it's repeated code. type uh, oh well, actually let's update beautiful.py because that's where the to-do was so it's just so ugly to have this here I should be able to say four all right like that looks more right right so like all right this is a file you guys should be able to understand so pay attention here we have actually this imports malloc allocator so we can import from here too. And we don't need D types. So here we import from Clang operations, Clang program, compile Clang, and malloc allocator. Uh, so malloc allocator is exactly what you think it is. It does malloc. Um, we allocate three four byte uh, arrays. We copy in two and three in little endian. Uh, we compile this program. Actually, separate that out. Since this is a learning example. So let's see if this runs. All our documentation is runnable. Uh, malloc allocator alloc missing one positional argument D type. Uh, well, that's because we didn't fix that one yet. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I don't save the D-type? Can I never save the D-type? Like, that's weird. I must have gotten rid of it somehow. So it's a little confusing because this is the size in bytes. Uh, I guess we don't want that to be the size in bytes. 
this is the high level buffer class. So we allocate D type times the item size. For this, we should do the same here. Should I like have a helper there? I should probably have a helper. This is why we have tests. The beauty of tests is you don't really have to think through a lot of stuff. You can just use the tests. LRU allocator free is missing a here. Get rid of D type here. Missing one argument D type oh, because they're still here. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. So the interpreted backends kind of need a D type. I guess I could just add a bit cast. Yeah, see, this is so boring, go back to hacking. Eh. I mean, this is the problem. This is my actual work. Let's keep all the docs and stick with Clang. Lazy buffer has a problem because I didn't fix that for uh, that's a CPU. do that at the lazy buffer level. Copy to device.
Hmm. Should probably actually fix this. I shouldn't really use NumPy. Beautiful works. I want to add another one that does like a memory view. And that's what it would be to, uh... so like right now this stuff is pretty big. Uh, NumPy is pretty deeply baked into, into this. See if we can clean this up at all. So we allocate, this is like the runtime layer of Tiny Greg. Come on, journey where we add two plus three and we clang. I'm streaming! So this is the program that's auto-generated. That's like the same as this program. We're still casting everything to float, that's terrible. That's gonna be fixed. You guys think I'm high, but like what it actually is is, it becomes kind of harder to communicate when you've been spending a lot of time just like staring at this stuff and you can see the ideas in a way that's like harder to verbalize. I get why you think it's like being high. do something about this. They both do have view elements. So let's just get rid of that. Which I've been working alone less. We have a uh, tiny corp has a uh, has a second employee. One intern. You know, this isn't actually going to work. 
Now if I do CPU equals one. Wait, even that works? What? That shouldn't work. Oh, I know why it works. It works because those are never actually used. Hmm. See what fails, if anything. Okay, torch doesn't work, but NumPy somehow does. Thank you for gifting subs. CPU work, but not torch. Regardless, I know what I need to do. I know where I need to add a cast. I'm just interested that torch is broken. even weirder. Copy torch to CPU D types float. We should add the cast. Let's add the cast. We need the cast anyway. So there's some code in the interpreted uh, AST runner that if you get it, this is unreadable. Like if you don't know what this stuff is, You don't understand G stir funk for op AST for op? So simple, bros. All right, so here we have to do G stir. Don't worry what a G stir. Oh, God. Uh, You're worrying about it, I know. All right, we're gonna get the cast function. in the input here. I mean, this is particularly confusing code. So what this code is doing is it's generating Python for uh, running these things dynamically. And then it's gonna end up calling into this. So 
here we're going to do I'll show you when it's printed and it'll be a little more clear. Yeah, you guys would be more excited for the Jack stuff. You should do that. Okay, now it works. So you see that we've added a uniryops.cast here, and this true means it's a bit cast or a view. I can change beautiful.py, I think. No, I don't have that. We didn't fix the disk allocator. The disk allocator shouldn't even really have a D type. Yeah, like the D, see, it's just so, it's so stupid here. What are you doing? I plan to add just a runtime for embedded devices. Hmm. Never mind, this does need a D type. needs a D type because we have a cast function here. So it has an underlying D type. That doesn't need a D type though. We should be able to allocate them all with D types. In fact, just put it here. My unit tests pass through the dispensers. Oh, I love this, by the way. Rough fix, tiny red. Oh, do not compare types, use is instance. What? Where was I comparing types? Is that not okay? I don't want to do that. Um, oh, okay. So allocator has too many arguments to cast image. Uh, and has after allocator cast image. Um, 
we can fix abstractions.py. This is the old version of beautiful.py. Oh, we gotta fix graph malloc, graph metal. Rough is so fast, right? Do all my tests pass? All my tests pass, okay. Um, all right, let's let everybody chat for a little bit. Do we have viewers? I bet we don't have viewers. I bet this stuff gets no viewers. And what you wanna see is hype. How many viewers we got? Oh, 750, okay. All right, all right, all right, we got some viewers. Now we got liars. Um, I, knew, I knew the political rant would draw people in. No, but seriously, man, be nice to people, okay? Don't be mean to people, be mean to institutions that are failing and scamming us out of the future. Jensen said AGI 2026. I am saying AGI 2025. Yeah. I mean, what the hell is AGI? You don't want to go into this. Dude, there's no such thing as AGI. Oh, God, you think you have general intelligence and you think you're conscious. The arrogance of fucking humans, man. You know? <laughs> Uh, I didn't ask the runtime question. Why care about views? Well, because I create content and I do vaguely care that it's content that you enjoy. I, what kind of person would I be if I just created content for me? I don't know who I create content for. Why am I even here? You're thinking the Roomba starts talking in 2026. Well, that's a good indicator of AGI. Uh, right, do we want to do more? Do we want to do more refactors here? That was the main refactor I wanted to do. That's the main one that upset me. Um, we can look at beautiful for a little bit. Let's look at beautiful for a little bit. And we'll even let we'll even let non-subscribers talk. But please, please pay attention. This is accessible for you. I worked hard to make this accessible for you. I wrote this documentation just for you. Okay. So Tinygrad is a this is a stupid uh Tinygrad is a tensor library. And as a tensor library, it has multiple parts. Look, I'm writing this documentation for you, for you, prospective st streamer, streamer, streamer. Um, one, a runtime. This allows. Buffer management, running program, buffer management, compilation, and running programs. Two.
I'm trying to describe this stuff to you and maybe you'll be uh maybe you'll you'll like understand. Can can you ask? No, we're subscriber only again. Can you guys ask good questions? I'm trying to like I'm trying to make content for you, okay? Does everyone understand this? This is the easiest one to understand. Uh, we, we can just stay here for a little bit until you guys understand. Can I zoom in? There. There. Is that big enough? Am I allowed to make fun of boomers? Some guy got upset that I made fun of boomers. But the boomers are hoarding all the wealth in America. And they're the reason I can't buy a house. Right? And like, this isn't even like, you know, this, this is, who's the reason you can't buy a house? Boomers. Right? Like, I mean, I could buy a house, but it's a damn ripoff. Like, they, what? They're going to take it with them? Can we, can we, can we, is that okay? Is that punching up? If, if we, it's always, is it punching up? We, we got to punch up. You'd argue the hedge funds are at fault. Well, who owns the hedge funds? Boomers. That's right. All right. No, no, no. no. We're not going to rant about boomers. I'm trying to teach you guys something here. Inherit the house from your parent boomers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Does this stuff make sense to people? Here, do you want to look at the type? So if we look at the type of A, uh, let's, what is it? What do I run it with? It's like dash E, dash I, there we go, okay. All right, so you can look at like A and it's like a CU byte array. Does that kind of make sense? Right, and like copy in the byte array. Little endian. Uh, it's little endian because you put the little value first. Some computers are big endian. You'd have to put the two over here. Um, so if we look at lib here, we'll see that it's just it's a binary. It's a mock o binary with the feed face. It's actually a feed f cf because it's a 64-bit mock o. Why do I know this garbage? Um, so you'll see function is a, is a Clang program object. We can do function.lib and we can get back to that. We can say function.name and it's add because we created it with add here. Uh, and then we get the data out as buffer is going to make this a memory view. Oh, can I do two list? Oh, well, that's nice. I think that's nicer. Oh, that's cool. I mean, that points the way to like, like, Okay, if we're gonna get rid of NumPy, what are we actually gonna pass around? Um, we could pass around bytes too, but like a list is more accessible, All right? Because that's really the thing you want. You want like a Python object out. Actually, I think we can also do cast, but I'm not sure. Where are the formats described? Oh, instruct style. So if I do like cast i, cool. Cool. Um. Yeah, I mean that's nice because it shows you the actual bytes. Okay. So does this does this layer of abstraction uh, make sense to people? Here we can like look at Clang program and see what it is. It's not very complicated. It's just C type CDLL. So you can actually go in and like read each one of these. They're all very simple. 
Like this is the whole this is the whole Clang runtime here. Right? It's it's not many lines. You can like read all this stuff. That specifies compute in an abstract way. So this is the device. Um, like, how do I turn that? How do I not use NumPy there and turn that into bytes? Can we struct a pack? I guess I could do that. I want to do that. Is that supported? Put a numpy there. Bytes object has no attribute cast. Uh, So underlying buffer is not writable. Oh, this garbage. Byte array has no object cast. That's a lot of bullshit. It didn't even equal five after all that. What did it equal? Oh, well, it's because I did two plus two and not two plus three. Um, yeah, this should not be NumPy. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, so you guys see what this is? I don't know if there's a quicker way to do that. Uh, but this is creating bytes. This turns it into a writable byte array and that creates a memory view of it. It shouldn't actually have to be writable. So we might be able to fix that. What if I just do this? Where does it complain? To type from buffer. Sometime it has to be writable, I don't know. A later problem. If someone wants to look into that stuff, that'd be fun. All right, like copy in should be able to take a. Uh, so, yeah, I'll show you this copy in function, right? Like this should be able to take a read only memory view, but then you have copy out, which needs to take a read write memory view. Um, so, yeah. I can also show like how these things are related. Like if I print a dot buff here,
This is a return from alloc allocator.alloc, right? So this buffer is just syntactic sugar that can take in data types. It can do all of the, uh, this, actually this has an LRU allocator. Why do I need the buffer class again? It kind of like attracts the device. I don't know, maybe it's useless. Hey, maybe I don't need the buffer class. Well, it, it gives this a canonical type, but that actually may not be worth it. No, I've, I knew about the Wars operator for a long time. I just realized how useful it was. Uh, so this is just like a wrapper around this. There's an argument to get rid of it because the only place that we actually construct buffers is here in realize. And I can get rid of that layer of indirection. And this is just a much uglier interface. kind of be cool to get rid of, right? And then you're just left with these malloc allocator classes. You still have the copier. So if we go over to where buffer is defined, oh, I mean, I guess it is important to know if like, I guess you kind of need to track which device it's on and you can't do that with the opaque. No, we do kind of need this buffer, right? Buffers are also what's put into the JIT here. So you can see that there's a there's a buffer type here. Oh, wait, no, no, no. There's another reason we need the buffer class, and that's to hook Dell. No, okay. There's a lot of reasons we need the buffer class. Never mind. The key thing here is we hook Dell and we call the actual free on the allocator uh, when the buffer is deleted. Right? Buffers are one to one with the underlying buffer. Uh, so we do need the buffer class, this can't go away. But you wanna remove as much as you possibly can, okay. So then here at the device level, we describe the computation. It's a bunch of lazy ops. It loads, it adds, it stores. Um, get runner is a, well, not that get runner, this get runner here. Yeah, technically we have this middle step where we should I should I put this inside the class? There's not much on this class anymore. It's mostly just a holder class.
Yeah, it really does belong in the class. All right, then we can change linearizer ops to self.linearizer ops. We can put self here. And we can get rid of the word optimize. It's kind of implied that it's optimized. this and not be messing around with lots of other stuff while I do this, but whatever. That's not a good change. So we can break this down. We can say device clang dot get linearizer. To program take in any it shouldn't be able to. Okay. Cool. Um, oh, that's slower because that's bypassing the cache. You'll see here that it takes this uh, lazy op. Whoa, that hits the cache now. That shouldn't hit the cache. Interesting. Oh no, never mind. Of that. Okay. Uh, the initial ones are the copies. So if I run this with like debug equals two, yeah, you can see that it's doing the copies from Clang to CPU here. Um, so those are scheduled, so they were in the schedule. So I had to change that to minus one. The schedule has three items. So you can see this is the linearized version of this. Um, we have three globals coming in that are pointers, and then we have a const zero, uh, and then we have a load where we're loading from uh, this defined global, this const. Should be more clear that it's a pointer to that. It's a little annoying, uh, whatever. Comes from two loads, we add them. And then it comes from the defined global that's a store, the const of zero, and the ALU, which is this. Uh, and that's the store. So that becomes this code in the renderer. Maybe we can actually. Yeah, we can do that too. That's kind of cool. We'll... Oh, this compiled AST runner is trash. Look at all this crap. All this crap it gets from the linearizer. 
All right, there's a lot that actually goes into that. So we'll, we'll leave that as two program for now. Um, but yeah, you can get the source from the renderer. The renderer is what converts this into that. Uh, and then that's the buffer. This is what it looks like when it's scheduled. And then that's the tensor. Okay. Uh, comments are excluded from the line count, yeah. Comments, docs, and tests are excluded from the line count. And empty lines. Only lines actually have code on them. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, current line count of TinyGrad. And it manages to fit all of this stuff. No, it's not a white monster, it's a highball energy. Interesting. Can I put up? Can I put this here? I shouldn't have the assert actually do stuff. This one's kind of ugly, and we should probably. Okay, now we got fives in all of them.
I don't know if we want that. Like, you can dive into the types pretty easily. Okay, uh, any questions about the stuff? Are you guys following along? Come on, this is accessible. We can do the NumPy removal refactor, but that's kind of boring. I think this is a better way of going through the abstractions than abstractions.py. Oh, I gotta finish this. Non-subscribers have anything to say? Does this stuff make sense? I could talk about why you need each one of these layers or is this just boring? And you just want this. And in fact, you don't even want this. You want examples.coder. By the way, check this out. I added a thing to examples.coder called from buffer. Give it a minute. You're about to see the fastest loading ever. You have to start it three times before it's really fast. And now I start it again and I do hello. Boom. Look at how fast that's loading. It, it's, it's cached in memory, but it is a new start of the program, right? So remember how long it was taking to start the uh, examples? If you do from buffer equals one, boom. It's Quentin. This. Is what all this enables. Like under the hood of this 
highly sophisticated LLM, you basically have all these parts working together. Uh, yeah, in like a really beautiful way. Can I explain the layers? I mean, like, did I not explain them? Is this stuff not clear to people? Or you're like, why do you need any of this shit? Or like... Like, okay, so you need, okay, I, I know what, I know how we'll explain this. Tennygrad has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten runtimes. Really, ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Um, there's ten runtimes that I can effectively put here instead of clang. Uh, it can work on CPUs, GPUs, LVM, uh, Torch, WebGPU, all the different kinds of GPU libraries. Uh, so you need to abstract away the actual runtime. Uh, so hopefully you can see why this device layer of abstraction is needed. All right? I could just as easily replace the word clang here with a different device, uh, and it would do the same thing. Is that worth showing off? Like, does that interest people? Okay. So let's just exit here. So let's run this example. Uh, you see, this is Clang. It generates this linearized stuff, uh, but we can also change this to metal. Instead of having a Clang kernel, it's a metal kernel now. They look very similar, but you notice a few subtle distinctions between them. Um, this runtime is all handled for you. Like, you don't even have to think about this. You can use any device. You can specify computation in this uh, lazy op language, and it will work for any device you want, okay? Keep using the word device here. So lazy buffer is even a level abstracted uh, ahead of this. Like how ridiculous is it that you have to specify that you're doing like a load and a store? Um, so the advantage to this lazy buffer thing is I can do something like this. So let's say I want to add B twice. Uh, well, val's not 5. Note that val is now 8. Um, but look at how easy it is to just do another one, right? And then there's a question of whether you want to, uh, like, it shouldn't go back to memory in between. 
this stuff should be fused uh, let's say fuses the compute into kernels using memory only when needed so this is fused with this meaning there is no extra round trip to memory it puts in the minimum number of loads and stores that's really the function of what uh, of what lazy buffer is and then it can schedule the computation um, as a list of kernels So you'll see that the lazy buffer is doing two froms, which is converting it from uh, CPU to device, uh, and then a store here. And when I was doing the eight here, you can see that it gets the, uh, it does an add and it does another add. Uh, now it shows up here as two loads, but those two loads will be fused into one by the backend. Um, and we could see that by looking at the UOPS if we cared. Okay. So then there's the tensor. Um, The beauty of tensor is that I can do out dot backwards. So I can do like out dot mean dot backwards. Uh, I mean, it doesn't do anything, but now if I want, I can check the gradient. Uh, I think, don't know what the gradient's even gonna be. It's none. Oh, because yeah, these don't require gradient. You have to say require grad equals true. Uh, oh, I misspelled out. Did I always misspell out there? Yeah, I mean, do you want to see the actual value of that? The gradient is one. I don't really know why it's one, but it's one. And I trust that Tiny Red did it right. Uh, so yeah, that does the auto grad if you want. you can't do that because it's a what a code for scalar tensors but it has shape one so that's why you have to do the mean uh or i can probably do that does that work cool <laughs> um yeah i think we can use beam here too <laughs> i'm not sure really what it's gonna do but Yeah, there shouldn't be infinite. I don't know why they are. Whatever. Oh, does Klein not support timing? Should. I don't know. Oh, actually, I think I might know. Do I create buffers in there? I might have broken that. Function here, uh, buffers from land. No, that should work fine. I don't know. It's a later problem. Like I worked really hard on these abstractions. These have been developed over, where exactly do I call the kernels? Uh, so I create a runtime here for Clang program. And here I have this helper function called toProgram, 
which returns a compiled AST runner. Again, these are pretty short pieces of code. You can read them. Uh, so this is the thing that actually calls the kernels down here. And this CL prog is the, uh, is the same thing as, uh, so if I do func.cl prog, you'll see that this uh, here is the client program. Uh, so that's the actual, that's the same thing that you see here. Uh, so it's not that specific to the platform. We've managed to abstract it away pretty nicely. And then like these ops, there's not that many of them. Uh, so these are the same ones as like XLA, but instead of having a bajillion of them, we have basically these ones aren't exactly real. Uh, the ops are reused in multiple places. Yeah, abstractions.py is pretty out of date. Use beautiful.py. I think we're just going to delete abstractions.py. Um, beautiful.py is kind of the replacement for it. Um, so these are unary ops, binary ops, ternary ops, reduce ops, and buffer ops. So these are really the only things that have to be implemented by your backend. Um, I hate having malak there. Malak upsets me. Uh, we kind of do need malak. Where do I do that fusion? Uh, you can see in NumPy because, see, like, if you go to TinyGrad's main docs, you'll find this. So this is a map model in uh, in TinyGrad style that does like. Read this and understand why it's a matmol without actually using matmol. And the multiply and the accumulate are totally separate. Um, they have to be fused back together to make things remotely fast on CPU because you don't want your multiplied thing to go into, uh, you don't want that to go into RAM ever. You want to make sure that that multiply accumulate is fused into a single kernel. And the interpreted backends don't do that fusion. so we kind of hack that fusion together with einsum. I want to like Molac because it shouldn't actually be two things. It should just be it should just be able to figure that out, but the I guess I do keep that pretty close. I guess that's fundamental enough that it's fine. I also keep it pretty close in device.py. Uh, that rewrite is actually done right here. <coughs> I should rename that to source. That function's kind of, the function that's returned from that is kind of a crappy function that just shouldn't be a thing. Someday that'll be refactored. You can't return the Clang program exactly directly because this all works for GPUs as well. And again, I can change this all to metal. You'll see that it all still works. 
uh, but metal needs global sizes and local sizes. So I'll decide it on metal linearizer. We'll have to get that through CI and uh, get that merged. All right, we'll see if non-subscribers have any good questions. And then we're gonna move on. We're gonna do a little bit of jacks on some tiny boxes that we have. I'm gonna see what we can make work. If no one asks any good questions, that's just the end of the stream. I was gonna show you some jacks. Well, I'll just show off quickly. We do have tiny boxes now. This is T8. Uh, so you'll see it has 128 megs of RAM. Uh, it has a 32 core CPU. It has six Radeon RTXs. Is this the one that I installed jacks on? It did, okay. Um, I have a Jax example in Tiny Guide called Jax P Matmo, so we can see what we get here. Oh, this one only has CPU Jax, which is getting terrible numbers. Let's go to the other one. So this is T9. Uh, T9 also has a 32 core processor has 128 gigs of RAM. Oh, I didn't show you the, uh, it has, uh, I guess LS blocks, not really what I want there. And sorry, I didn't do the raid arrays right. How do I show, maybe the best way to do it is just dev uh, disk by uh, D name maybe? By ID? Yeah, Western Digital Blacks. Uh, so we have four of these and we're gonna put them in RAID zero. Um, it's going to be hella fast. Uh, in fact, to give you an idea of how fast it's gonna be, I have some helper scripts here where we can do test disk. Uh, this in parallel uh, reads from all the disks. So you see that in parallel, we're getting almost 28 gigabytes per second. Um, and that's gonna translate to how fast we'll be able to read things uh, Oh. My GPUs are fully connected. Did that finish? Yeah, wow, that's terrible. Uh, my GPUs are fully connected. You'll see this in a minute. So these are the bi-directional uh, copy valence between the GPUs. Uh, unlike NVIDIA, AMD allows um, you to uh, communicate directly over PCIe. So we're getting 55 gigabytes per second. Notice the bytes. Um, we can do this. Uh, oh, because we didn't run it here. Did they lose their IPs somehow? Oh, this one lost its IP. Did it reboot? Uh, mod probe.
There we go. Alright. This is the InfiniBand uh, connection between the two tiny boxes. Uh, so you see that we're getting almost 200. This is gigabits per second. Uh, so if you want that in bytes, we're going to have to uh, do a little division. 24 uh, gigabytes per second, but that's full duplex. Uh, so it's, it's actually similar to the PCIe. So we're going to be able to train on all six of these GPUs uh, together as one uh, GPU. Let me get that JAX example up here. I think I installed good JAX on this one. I had to build JAX from source because it's AMD. Yeah, see the rock M's? Boom. So that's our total teraflops uh, of a tiny box. We're getting uh, 791 teraflops, and that's float 16, but summing in float 32. So you see the output D type here is float 32. Um, yeah, that's equivalent to four or five 4090s, uh, but we use AMD uh, because AMD supports the peer to peer stuff. Yeah, it's really important to like get real benchmarks and ask the question how close you are to utilizing all the flops. So this is doing a map mall at 107% MFU. Um, so TinyGrad has all the flop reporting software uh, built into it. So it's very important that we actually start to achieve uh, very high performance on these things. Um, that's a lot of flops. Can it run Crisis? I'm glad you asked. You can actually plug in up to 18 monitors into your tiny box. Uh, hopefully you guys saw the pictures I posted on Twitter. Uh, wow, this stream just turned into an ad for tiny boxes. Uh, how fast is tiny grad on a tiny box in comparison? It's faster than it is on my Mac, but a lot of the optimization efforts to date have gone into the Mac uh, because we didn't have tiny boxes. Like tiny grad is by far the best library to use now on, on Metal. Um, it's way faster than Torch. Uh, still no shipping to EU. To, I'll ship it wherever, man. I'll just charge you money. I'll ship it wherever and I'll charge you the EU tax, you know? We'll call it the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the, the Paris tax, right? We'll name it after the Paris Climate Accord. We'll call it the Paris tax, all right? So, man, I don't know. Maybe there's a 10% Paris tax. Uh, we are absolutely not shipping to North Korea. No. Um, the tiny box is uh, is for sale. Um, you can you can pre-order them right now. Um, so this we're actually only getting twenty eight. This we're actually getting five hundred and uh, getting more. This is just what the RAM is. We'll have a test for this as well. Um, these might be only two 1500 watt power supplies. Uh, and this will definitely be done. And you can pre-order a tiny box today for just $100. Uh, yeah, and they are, they're actually getting built. And I have pictures of these two tiny boxes on our Twitter. Uh, you can check them out. They're pretty cool. You know I will win. Thank you, thank you. Um, 15K, yeah, I mean, it's an expensive computer. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's a good computer. Have you tested with workloads other than ML? See, like, why do, like, non-subscribers always ask stupid questions like this? It's a really dumb question, man. Like, here's what I care about, okay? There's this competition called MLPerf. And MLPerf asks how fast you can train uh, models. All right, so these are the MLPerf training. These are the different, I hate, they redid their website. The hell is this? All right. 
Bro. Bro, fix your shit. Well, these are the models, and this is how many minutes it takes to train, and this is shitty spreadsheet software. Um, but yeah, yeah, so you wanna know like how fast you can get like an image net to, to 75.9. Uh, we're getting there. Again, a lot of tiny work has just been, uh, tiny grad has just been laying groundwork to make this stuff be uh, great. And no, they go crazy now. They have GPT-3 is now a, a model that they have here. Uh, we're not gonna be able to do GPT-3 on a single tiny box, though we should be able to do stable diffusion two on a single tiny box. And I'm hoping we can do GPT-3 across like six tiny boxes. Um, 15K is a lot of GPU hours. Well, not really. I mean, okay, so you can work it out, right? So it has, so it's 15K, but it's six GPUs and the GPUs in Azure are probably something like $2 a GPU. So it's a thousand, it's this many hours. Uh, so if you do hours, two weeks, right? It pays for itself in eight weeks. And that's not even like, a, like the math's not even exaggerated, right? Like you can run a tiny box equivalent for eight weeks in Azure, or you can buy the tiny box. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit more with power because you have to pay something for power. So maybe it works out to more like 10 weeks. Um, but yeah, I mean, these GPUs are, uh, maybe it's more like a dollar, but still we're, we're, we're on the order of, uh, you know, it definitely pays for itself in six months. Um, the cost of power is small in comparison, yeah. Uh, so e even if you're only, even if you're managing to get these GPUs, like these GPUs are maybe half an A100. Um, so yeah, you're still talking. Okay. Pays for itself easily in six months. Yeah, I mean the cloud is like the cloud is not good. The cloud is fine if you have like surging workloads or you want low pro, uh, if if you want low priority CPUs, the cloud's unbelievably cheap. Um, two A one hundreds for a month on Azure cost like nine K. Thank you, right? So two A one hundreds, which the box is definitely equivalent to two A one hundreds, right? Like I just showed you a benchmark where I'm getting this. Um, this same math on an A100, the theoretical max of an A100 is 312 uh, teraflops. So like, this is more powerful than two A100s, and if two A100s for a month on Azure costs 9K, you, you've just paid for a tiny box in two months. Um, it's yours, there's no other weird people on it. Uh, are these computers meant for the general public? Okay, so like, it's an interesting question. I don't believe in meant for, right? Nothing is meant for anybody. I, I hate this when you go to a website and their products are like broken down by like business segment, like no, fuck you. Break it down by like what the products actually are, right? I tell you what the box is. What you buy it for is totally up to you, man. Um, And you know, here's something else I've kind of noticed, like, the more someone just tells you a price, the better a deal it is, right? If somebody keeps the price like a secret, um, yeah, it's not good. What's the total GPU RAM space? It's uh, 144 gigabytes. So again, similar to two 80 gig A100s, uh, a little less. What's the wattage of the tiny box? So. You can, the, here, you wanna do it? I can just show you. Uh, Tinybox, this is open source, by the way. You can check this on, uh, on my GitHub. So we can do burn here, which will spin up burn threads on all the GPUs. Uh, you can check out my thermals here too. I worked really hard. Uh, Actually, I, one of the uh, comma hardware engineers has been has been helping with this project, and he's done a really great job uh, on the thermals of this thing. The GPUs don't get above seventy, uh, and it's silent. Not silent. When, when it's silent, when it's when it's off, when the GPUs are going full tilt, you will hear it, 
but it's like it's definitely it's sub 50 db um i don't think it's sub four it's probably about 45 db uh we'll get a db meter we'll measure that we'll post that on the site but yeah so these don't go above 70. um actually i they get re i think they're really low because this is actually in a cabinet so here we can look at the watts here uh, so it's 327 for each gpu really you should have 3000 watts if you want full 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 power but you can also power limit these things and you will be able to run it off a single outlet and i will test it well in single outlet mode um can you place it in a bedroom yeah so i'll test it really well i'll figure out how to like throttle things down so we only lose like 20 percent performance going down to a single 1500 watt outlet um, that is single outlet in EU. Yeah, yeah, if you have 220, you're probably fine with... If you have a 220 15 amp, I mean, let's see. Look, it's doing other compute on a tiny box. I'm doing simple math. Okay, you have 220 of 15 amps, 0.8 load factor. Yeah, you'll be fine with that. Um, you'll be more than fine with that. If you have a 20 amp EU circuit, you're, you're, that's way more than fine. Uh, how's Hashcat? You want to try it? Is this going to work? Like how, how annoying is this going to be? Make? All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, does this go on the GPU or is this, why don't I use J? Okay, it uses OpenCL, that should just work. I think CL works on this computer. The stupid GPUs, I don't have basically AMD persistence daemon up. So one trick is to just do a watch and one User rock M bin rock M SMI. Uh, so if you see D message, uh, yeah, it's got to like keep the GPUs up so it'll work. All right, um, hash, I don't know, what's example 400? That's a good example. Uh, All right, so unfortunately, uh, it's a little annoying because what I would normally do now is just take this and copy and paste it into stupid, uh, into chat GPT. How much stream, you wanna say something? I just bring you some tea. Oh, thank you. Come in. Oh. oh, I thought you were over. get banned for that <laughs> I'm not linking against rock M device libs storm frosty do you know how I can just fix this <laughs> uh, wait, there's a way to specify OpenCL, right? Let's try ignoring hip.
Uh, here, you can see all the RAM here. Ooh, there's even more RAM than I thought. One hundred forty-seven gigabytes. Uh, okay, I don't know if that was fast. That was saying that seemed fast. Was that fast? Is there like a hard one here? What's in this file? We have hashcat working, it's just, wait, what does M400 even mean? Okay, let's try brute force, that seems better. Is this fast? Okay, is this a good number of mega hashes per second? 60 giga hashes per second. Did it actually use the GPU? I think so, yeah. Looks like it used all the GPUs. Is this a good number of giga hashes? Benchmark. Doesn't seem like a good number of giga hashes if that's what they're getting. LC0 stats? How do we do that? Can I like participate in training? No, there's no way it's this slow. We try to get hip to work. Uh, okay, so what's the problem with this? Dash O did not fix that. Hmm. 
No, no, no. Someone linked what the problem was earlier. The OCL runtime should do that for you. What drivers do I need to install? By the way, what's the default hash type here? Oh, here, hash type references below. M0. Oh, that's MD5. So wait, that guy who Guys, I like that you're bringing, we're bringing new, uh... sorry, stream chat's going back over here. Check this for debug vars. This looks like a nightmare. Yeah, chat got energetic. You guys are excited about, about cracking passwords. Don't use your tiny box for illegal activity, okay? How do I use, how do I do hashcat in benchmark mode? Oh, now we're talking. Benchmark all. Optimized kernel enable. Oh, we have another flag. No, nope, that's not a real flag. That seems pretty good. Is there really an enable optimized kernel flag? Oh, never mind. I don't know why that was slow. This is pretty good. Okay, good. Good. We're crushing a 4090. All right. <laughs> uh, and actually, that's not one of them. We can do. Now we can pass benchmark all. And we can compare. Oh, I guess it, yeah, okay, it does the, okay, I see. So we are, how much better than a 4090? I 
And this is without hip too. We should be able to do better if we fix hip. Oh look, see, Joomla, crushing it. Post gray, crushing it. Hip will be slower than OCL. Okay, we gotta fix, we gotta fix. Uh, due to the ABI, really? This has to be fixable. No, it's okay, it's on by default if, uh, what is OCKL? Okay, we're not linking to this for some reason. Am I doing AOC this year? No, maybe I should. Um, Configure something. What did I not put in my environment? Oh, I think I didn't do this. What? Add dash V to have it dump the compile command. Oh, add dash V to that. Oh, that's just annoying. It's not path, is it? This sounds like AMD's problem. Well, it will be even faster when somebody fixes hip for Hashcat. But until then, that's pretty good.
best going to mine the GPUs. Right, get ready for the scammiest website. Oh, what is cryptocurrency mining? Where's the good website that shows this? hash no, no no that's lending my stuff what to mine ah. beam except it has no mark cap and no volume Use beam equals one to mine beam. <laughs> what are AMD 8000 GPUs? That's not a GPU. It's a CPU. All right, anything else we want to test on the tiny box? Eight thousand is a bigger number than forty ninety. That's that's good thinking. No, we don't. We don't have. I don't know how we'd run SDXL. Okay, speed run AOC day one. All right, let's see what it is. Can I copy and paste this into GPT and ask for a solution? Oh, I see. You have to find the numbers. Ah. Let's see if we can do it with one line. Uh, for s in st dot split slash n, we want. Uh, C in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, 4 C and S. Okay. Now that gives us the numbers. Um, so let's see if we can get away with using a walrus here. Sub zero int plus int val minus one. And we want some. Yeah, let's check our code. We're splitting the strings. We're extracting the numbers. We're getting the first number. We're getting the last number. We're First digit and the last. Oh, no, no, no. We have to combine them. No, that's wrong. So we don't add them. We combine them. So we want it to be, we want the plus to go there. Two. Yeah. 
Yeah, we tried. What did I do? <laughs> this is a number. Um, does this not work? Oh, I see what we did. We have to do C for C and S. If C in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, now we get 142. Leap programming, boys. Leap programming. So do you guys like my line? It's a beautiful line. <laughs> I feel like he might be tripping on some mushrooms right now. Hmm. Well, I can't get part two. Cause I have to log in. Okay. If someone want to paste it, if someone pastes it in the chat, I'll do part two. Spelled out digits are now valid too. I see. Can you give me the example? I see. Okay. So we have this. Uh, we're going to want to split it based on that. That's fine. All right. Um, we got to get the spelled out numbers. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. First, we're going to need to make a stupid dictionary called R. Okay. And R is a really stupid dictionary because we're going to have to type these out. No, it can't actually want 16, right? Well, it doesn't matter anyway. So, there's no other way I know to get these. This one's going to be more than one line, boys. I'm very upset. Six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. Okay, we actually had to type that out, which was awful. We should have asked ChatGPT to do it for us. I know. Why aren't we using examples coder.py? We have to supercharge our workflow with LLMs. Conveniently located in TinyCAD, okay? Uh, all right. Whoa! I mean, it's totally wrong, but still base, bro. No, actually, that's a good point. I was doing way too much work. What we actually want is this. Right, so now R is an array with all those things, right? Now we just need a function called fix. It uses so many lines. For IR in enumerate, 
in the numerator R, we want to say x equals x dot replace rr stir one return x. Now we go back to our original one line here, but instead of st dot split, it's already split, but we're going to have to fix it. So we're just going to throw a fix here, and then what should the value be? Is it 211? It's 281. What did we do wrong? Oh, the 823. That's cheating. That's cheating, man. You can't just do that, okay? So wait, this is supposed to be two? Return X plus 70, all right. Oh, freaking overlapping, boys. All right, all right, all right, all right. We'll fix the code. Okay. How do we fix the code? No, 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 16 has to be right. That can't actually be 16. Oh, and zero is also not a real digit. So they probably troll with zero somewhere. I don't know how to use a regex. No one knows how to use regexes. Drug X's are impossible, all right? All right. While one. For I in length C. Ugh. Write a regex to replace with <coughs> No, no, make it generic and good. Ugh. Oh, I'm too old for competition programming, boys. This is this is too difficult. I must say, this is too difficult. Nobody can do this. It's unsolvable. It's unsolvable. Ugh. No, really? I have to do that? That just sucks. No, it's impossible, boys. It's impossible. Nobody can do this. Um, 
No, all right, 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 all right. Chill, guys. I'm messing with you. Obviously, I wouldn't be doing, if I was doing this for real, I wouldn't be doing it in the stupid uh, Python console. But we're going to stick with the console because we started with the console. And we don't give up on what we started. Um, okay. Ready? All right. So we're going to have to replace, we're going to define a function called R. All right. And R is going to be a recursive entry function. If any, what's x dot index if I don't? It raises a stupid exception. No, 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 don't worry. Okay, we're gonna call it E, okay? We have a good name for the function now, it's E, okay? Um, if, okay, we wanna say x dot index n for x for n in r if r in x okay now this gets us the one to replace uh for I n in enumerate r. Now we're going to put a i there. Okay, and now we're going to do sorted. Sub one r. X dot replace No, no, this doesn't work yet. Okay, we're gonna need more We're gonna need more uh I'm not happy about this we need to think of a new way to solve this, okay? Do you want me to write the boring loops to show you I can do it, then we'll come back to that? No, I don't need to show you I can do it. The point of these streams is to educate you on good programming style. And if you can't fit it in one line, it's not good programming style, guys, okay? We could use lambdas. Um, okay. We have to find which one of them comes first in the string, okay? So can we first find out which one comes first in the string? Let's, let's try, let's make a temp function called x. And we'll start with just this. So let's first try it on beautiful 823. Mm. In string requires string as left operand. Oh, because we have to say if n and x, of course. Now when we run it, it tells us the index of each of the things. But actually we have to do plus one because we broke it with, okay. So we have an eight at zero, we have a two at four, and we have a seven. So now we're gonna have sorted
if ack equals sorted temp. Ooh, wait, 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 does this work? Can I use the thing there and then um, x dot replace uh, r sub x sub one minus one with uh, stir act one. Now, am I allowed to use ACC over there? Else x. Okay. So now, if we fix, oh, unsupported type for tuple and int. Oh, because we have to take the first one here. And we also need to put the proper string in here. We have to return that. Okay. Now we need our fix, which is going to call fix recursively. Now, how do we write this on one line? That's the great question. Um, okay. We're going to say x if ret. No, we can always return ret. Ret if ret fix x equals equals x else fix ret. Yeah. Okay, now let's try our fix. Uh, we didn't return. Sorry, I think I'm in Scala. Okay, now we have our fix, which is the much better version of fix. So now we can go back to our original version here. What do you say the answer had to be? We got to call our fix because it's recursive fix, okay? Is 281 the right answer? There we go. There we go, boys. There we go. All right. Let's just put our program all together. It's a great program. Okay. First, we have this. Then we have this. Oops. Oh, I can't do that on multiple lines. Okay. We'll just do this. Code. All right. So now we have that, that's a great line of code, right? And we have that, that's a great line of code. This is the one of the highest quality lines of code in here. Okay, and now here we return the value, we'll print it. Okay, now we have our code. Now I can eval, now exec our code. Oh, well, we have bugs. Oh, was that not the latest version of fix? We have to make sure we have the latest version. Yeah, no, that's not the latest version of fix. Okay, where's the latest version of fix? It's here. It's the latest version of our fix. It's here. It's the latest version of this. It's here. There we go, guys. That. Oh, no, 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 we forgot a line. We forgot a line. We had to define the things here. Okay, now we have the code that finds them and checks. Then we have the code that does the replacement. Then we have the code that does that replacement recursively. Then we have the final print statement. Wait, should 823 be 823? Oh no. No, that can't be right. You can't use the T twice. That's cheating. Stop being a cheater. Okay. So how do we write this with less lines? This is way too many lines of code, boys. This is way too many lines of code, okay? 
So this one figures out which one the earliest one is. Oh, I already have a sorted there, so I didn't actually have to do sorted twice. Well, that's good. That'll simplify our code. And we could combine this into one great function. But that looks like code off, don't you think? No, that doesn't fit on one line anymore. That's ugly. There is no 8 2. If we can use exceptions, okay, let's figure out if we can use exceptions, then we can get it on less lines. Um, so we're going to want this logic, but then we're going to say, So that's going to throw an exception. And we want to do x dot replace r sub Oh, you only need the first and last of each string. Oh, but no, they might be normal digits. That's a good point. We got to consider the runtime of our algorithm. Okay, fine. We'll write the simple algorithm. All right. Okay, we'll just, we'll simply just zip this with a range from 1 to 10. No, 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 okay. We want to get the index of each one. Oh, I know how. We're going to write this so simple, boys. We're going to write this so simple, okay? So, we need a function. There's a function called R index too. So we want x index n plus x index stir i. comma i, that's good, for i in range 10, okay, so now when I pass in 8, 2, 3, substring not found, if stir i in x. Okay. Cool. Uh, actually, we won't do sorted here. We'll just do this. Okay, now we want um, some temp x 
Uh, we should do sorted, actually. So we can always just take the last one. Sum temp x sub 0 sub 1. Uh, we need a string of that. We need int stir stir temp x. We should really reuse that. Uh, tt sub minus 1 sub 1. It's an int for x and st2. There you go, 281. All right. We've now written the beautiful simple version, okay? So the simple version simply has r. This line, and then this line. Beautiful. All right, can we do it any simpler? I really don't think so. I think that's just about the simplest you can get. All right, no, 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 guys, that's way too many lines. Okay, those two lines can stay, but can we get this on one line? Print sum. Yeah, I mean, I think we can just substitute in temp x there. It's not too bad. You know what? And this, I hate all those people who are like, oh, I need my editor. You know, dude, you don't need a fucking editor, right? Like, bro. Bro, I'm doing this in the Python console, right? I'm literally doing this in, I'm, I'm making quote strings so I can exact them. There's your one line solution. Can I remove R? Well, I can't really remove R because there's no way in Python to make it spell the numbers out. But you should have an LLM ready to generate that kind of crap for you really fast. All right, let's ask Quentin what this does. What? Oh, I broke it. How'd I break it? Huh? Wait, I ran it up there and it worked fine. What are you doing to my code? That's so many lines. Your 
stop expanding. You're adding spaces to my code and ruining it. Okay, good. Can you make the code readable? Please check it still runs. Bro, you broke my code. <laughs> yeah, Quentin, fix that shit. Uh, no, we need Quentin to be faster. Should we move him to a tiny box? Should be faster on a tiny box, right? Quentin, you're being slow. <coughs> oh, we gotta download the model. Whatever. Oh, it's now sixty. Oh, I'm good, thank you. Do I already have it on the other tiny box? Yes, it's on this tiny box. Okay, we'll let that one download it, whatever. Oh, it's gotta create the cache though. No, AI is stupid, can't you guys see? It's not taking my job anytime soon, man. What? No, it just cheated. It didn't actually run the Python. It just printed its own output. I think it's gonna be faster at uh, once it compiles, but every time you give it a new prompt, if the prompt's a different size, it's gotta compile code, which sucks. Metal's compiler is blazingly fast. How's your downloading going? Oh, you finished. Five, three trillion dollar compiler. No, this is, I mean, this, this sucks. It's got to compile shit.
It didn't finish? Okay, this is just broken now. What are you doing, tiny box? Let this in no way be a reflection of the quality of your tiny box. Oh, maybe I have some weird version checked out. Were we not on the GPU or something? Yeah, we're not on the GPU. Like, that's just messed up. Oh, tiny grad has another dependency now. Oh, that's terrible. And that just silently fails. Oh, who built this shit? It doesn't tell you what device it's running on. Why was it? Oh, this is some old version. So GPU C types is a new package I launched. Um, it's C types wrappers for HIP, CUDA, and OpenCL. So it actually was running, it's just really slow. What's it doing now? Maybe it didn't actually, maybe it's actually reading the weights right now. That's slow. Huh. What's going on? What's it doing? Must be some copy issue. But if it was copying, it should even tell me. Oh, it did tell me, I see. Oh, something's just wrong with that example. This one's fast. That's pretty good. Why is this not working? What is it doing? Where is it spending this time? Try the hip back end? Frozen? 
Like it's like running out of memory somehow. We have some memory usage bug. Yeah, look, it's gotta be memory, all right? Cause that's half the GPU memory somehow. All right, we must have a bug where we're using doubly as much memory as we think we are. Oh, uh, maybe we'll disable the yellow U allocator. I understand, I run Llama in CI though, so. No? That's as far as it goes. Okay, there's lots of things that are strange about this. The world needs that D-type refactor more than ever. Tiny box works to train C far. What's going on? I don't have any idea what's going on either. I don't know why this is freezing. Like it must be trying to allocate more memory than it has. But I have the call to alloc and it doesn't seem like it. There shouldn't be another secret way to allocate. <laughs> like that's the real allocator there. They should have plenty of uh... I removed the fast path from the copier. Rewriting it in Rust will not fix this. Do have some stuff where we're keeping it around. Or maybe we're not keeping it around. Yeah, that might be the problem. We do keep it around on the GPU. And this hangs. So there's a bug in here, by the way.
and that's annoying because we don't pass in the real device there. We pass in this garbage. We get to there and it freezes. <laughs> no idea, boys. No idea. All right, it's not gonna be fun to debug that. You don't want me to debug that, do you? We need some better tests for that. Okay, okay, you want me to debug that? Okay. All right, all right, let's debug it. All right, let's go. Okay. Um, first off, we gotta stop working in this stupid uh, environment. Let's bring up VS Code, new window. Uh, Remote Explorer T9, connecting current window, and open folder. Kind of good. Okay. So, is it the copy in that's failing or the allocate that's failing? Uh, well, first, I want my other. I want my other PR merged first. Let's hope I didn't mess it up. No deep type Alec. But even without that, it doesn't really matter. From tiny grad runtime. What? Why? I hate this. Why would you do that? Restart the server. Yeah, good. Python language server. Thank you. Uh, hips import uh, hip allocator. Okay. Allocate in uh, two fifty six megabyte gigabyte chunks, ending with Ali. Welcome, 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 welcome. Just got a twenty. works fine. Could it be the RAM usage? Could I be that wasteful of RAM that I'm using a hundred and bajillion megabytes?
Wait. What just happened? It just worked. I don't understand. I showed it it could allocate more memory and it did. I didn't merge anything. I have no idea. Maybe it got into a bad state because I closed the other one. Oh wait, but this was happening on both tiny boxes. There you go. It works. And it's faster. Boys. It just fixed itself. See, this takes a little while because it's actually got to do recompilation there. I just banged the TV. See, look how fast it is. Look what it did. It messed up those int and stirs. Oh, are we still running the benchmark, maybe? We tried it on both computers. Where can you run this model? Just literally run examples.coder in TinyGrad and it'll work, probably. You guys, uh, you guys are gonna have to analyze that in the comments because I don't know, man. Let's see if it figures out that it broke the code. What the fuck, it gave 25 and not 281. That's a bad refactor. See, now it takes time because it's got to run the stupid hip compiler. Test with 13B model here. We should be able to see the RAM usage, I think. Okay, we're using 62% of the VRAM. That seems right. Oh, you were so close. You forgot a TT sub zero here. No, you forgot multiple things. Did it fix the code? It did not. Uh, that's using, oh, don't trust, I mean, don't trust any of these percentages. They're all fake. I mean, NVIDIA's are fake and AMD matched NVIDIA the best they could. So I'm sure they were uh, fake. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, you saw me debug the issue.
Why does Tiny Grad have to be so tiny? Because it's in the name, okay? Why does Pi Torch have to look like Torch? Because it's in the name. Why does TensorFlow have to be bloated and give confusing error messages and have very verbose APIs? Because it's written by Google. I threatened to debug and it solved itself. Great. All right. Uh, I think that's today's stream. I'll have to figure out why the tests are failing on the node D-type Alec, but we'll get that merged. Uh, oh, you wanna look at GBT fast from PyTorch? Yeah, pretty cool. And they're talking about under a thousand lines. I like them talking like this. This is good. Guys, we're changing culture, boys. We're changing culture. Um, okay, do any of these tiny boxes have PyTorch? Does this have PyTorch? But does it have CUDA? has CUDA. Okay, good, you're good. Then we should be able to use this. All right. Uh, let's try GBT fast. So what other models here? Open LM research, that should work. Whoa, look at that parallel fetch using TQDM based. Um, all right, we're downloading stuff. Okay, we should set model repo. If you had a tiny box, you could have fun too. Why do they make the example not work? Everyone's logged into Hugging Face on their Cly. Generate text. Tiny box under 10K? It's just not doable. They're probably only gonna get more expensive, but more powerful, right? It's like running never gets easier, you just go faster. I, I'm a little upset. I wanted it to be a person. Uh, sorry, I wanted it to be a pay to flop. Uh, someday I want a tiny box to be a person. So one person is 20,000 teraflops. So you need 27 tiny boxes right now to be a person. Teeny box? If you want a teeny box, people have brought this up. If you want a teeny box, just buy a gaming computer. Like I could make you guys some overpriced gaming computer and slap my logo on it, but is that what you really want? Like there's no engineering prowess in that, right? At that point, I'm just Alienware, you know? No, no, I hate all of you and that's not what you want and I'm not doing it because I'm not a fucking sellout, you know? That's what sellouts do. Spoon feed you. The computer will make, you guys just saw me solve advent of code in a Python terminal, okay? Okay, haters, like that's, that's, that's just, just like, if you don't need a, oh, I gotta get my editor environment. I guess you want me to do it with a crappy keyboard too? I'll do it with a crappy keyboard, it doesn't matter. It's in your mind, right? So no, you don't want a teeny box. I thought of becoming a pro esports player. The only game I can play competitively is Smash Brothers 64, and I'm not even competitive at that anymore. Like I was competitive 15 years ago. Um, you guys saw me try to speed run Pokemon Red and how bad I am at it. Uh, All right, time to load model. 5.5 5 
nine seconds. All right, you want to compare that? We'll compare it to TinyGrad's coder. How long does this take to load the model? All right, okay. A little faster in TinyGrad, point TinyGrad. Uh, this is compiling some shit. One torch, what's one torch? Oh, it's a plasma torch. Oh, unspecified launch failure. <laughs> and that is what you get from torch. Unspecified launch failure. I don't even know, like... Guys, like, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> all right, we'll Google the error. We'll give them, we'll give them a fair shake, all right? Uh, wait, no, okay, okay, okay. We'll, we'll give him a fair shake. I have to install PyTorch nightly. Okay, we want the nightly Linux RockM. Good thing we upgraded Pillow. Mm. Who thinks this is going to fix unspecified launch failure? I will point out that all of TinyGrad's dependencies are very tiny. I, I worked really hard, so there's only a few dependencies left. All that's left now is TQDM, GPU, C types, and NumPy. And these are both pure Python under 100 kilobyte dependencies. What's pyfix.py? That's not a thing. Uh, okay, what am I running? Gener eval.py? Generate.py. It's very complicated. Oh, ooh, the time to load model went down. I'm sure you guys my llama while we wait. This is Tiny Grad's Llama. The whole thing's here. See torches? It's actually pretty nice. It's actually pretty similar. Quite nice, actually. I'll use a data class for the args. It's probably not a bad idea. How many years of coding do you need to reproduce TinyGrad? You can look. Uh, at how long I've been working on it. And then you can think about what your ratio of programming is to me. I don't know why this mouse does that sometimes. It's kind of ugly. I'm going to clean this up. By the way, we're waiting for PyTorch to compile right now. Uh, okay, only web GPU failed. Test llama compile speed. Yeah, that's not bad. It's probably some stupid thing. Wonder how to fix it blind? So we have the function that actually calls this uh, compile speed. 
Yeah, okay. What? Oh, is this because I used the fake allocator? Yeah, yeah, fake allocator and fake program caused me so much trouble. Literally, it's just that. See if we get the check mark. Oh, how are we doing? Has it compiled yet? Oh, not bad. I mean, no, it's actually by not bad. I actually mean very bad. What the fuck is this? <laughs> um. Yeah, Quentin's brother, uh, <laughs> you know, he's, um, is this how bad this open, this open law is? <laughs> I downloaded 14 gigabytes for that. Uh, great. Okay, it took two minutes to compile. Uh, what's my speed? I don't think this actually supports timing. It doesn't support timing. How many tokens per second would you say that is? Oh, actually they're just talking about bandwidth achieved. We should be able to just get that if I do that. Yeah, we can get the timing here. Well, this is gonna be slower though. Actually, no, not if it's using HipGraph. Is it using HipGraph? Oh, it's using HipGraph, sick. Okay, so that's our time. And that's our bandwidth, okay. So it's a little bit slower than PyTorch, but it doesn't print question marks and gives you the right answer. That's a pretty good trade-off, right? Um, so this is, you can see these ones here are using HipGraph. Tiny's debug is sick, I know, right? We work hard, boys, we work hard. <laughs> uh, no, we shouldn't hate on PyTorch too much. They'll get this stuff to work. Um, we like PyTorch, and I believe that this is real. It's probably just some online bug somewhere. Uh, to be fair, I'm not using this on NVIDIA, which is mostly what they're targeting. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, we get our check mark. I made CI faster. Let's read this and see if we did beautiful. Did we do beautiful? That's better. That's the new dad. Clean. Mm. What do I use unary ops for now? Oh yeah, no, I stuck it in cast. That's cleaner, cleaner. Moved that up there. Cleaner. Yeah, this PR mostly looks like a win. So unfortunately we can't, oh, I guess we can see how long it takes still. We just can't see uh, the outputs unless we're signed into GitHub. If I were CEO of OpenAI, what would I change? Um, by the way, you see why that's slow? It's not slow because the GPU kernels, it's slow because it's got to compile each one of them. Uh, I would not open source the weights. I know, guys, I know I love open source, but no, come on, we gotta have a business model. I would not open source the weights if I was the CEO of OpenAI. Uh, I would publish papers and I would include model architectures. Um, you know, for a couple of reasons. To entice researchers to not like, to like establish ourselves as the kings because what's gonna end up happening, again, a lot of people think in a very short-sighted way. They're not thinking about how to build a company for 10 years. Um, and like, if OpenAI keeps being closed, they're not gonna keep the lead. Uh, and I would like to keep the lead until you know we achieve the singularity. Uh, so I would make all the, I would just be very open when I talk, right? I would just like, I would say completely honestly, here's what we're doing, right? Like, yeah, you could compete with me, right? You could train 20, pay $25 million and train GPT, 
but I'm not gonna open source my infrastructure and I'm not gonna open source my weights. So like, you know, you can build your own infrastructure and weights, but at that point, like I'm just not worried about anything else, right? If, if I lose at that point, I've slowed the world down and it's gonna end up being less of a good strategy long-term as a company uh, to keep your architectures closed and to just like be closed, like don't do that. Right, like here's the thing about lying. When you lie or when you keep something a secret, right, eventually you start lying and keeping secrets from yourself. Those things are not separatable. Great. Test pass. Let's click the merge button. Oh, I feel like I might have broken it on. I don't know, YOLO, man. There's a chance I broke it on the internal CI. Uh... No, yeah, so I'd just be like, open and the good guys and a lot of people would love me and you know there'd be a small percentage of people who would be upset that you don't open source weights but like you know come on like other people should be able to catch you and you should have to work to stay ahead and if you're trying to build a moat uh where that's not true you're not going to have that moat forever right you're you're encouraging your own disruption if you want to build a company that lasts a hundred years, that lasts a thousand years, don't ever, like Google at some point decided to turn. Google made the sharp left turn, as the AI safety people would say. Um, and Google's probably only going to be around, at least in its current form, for like five, ten more years. It's not going to be a relatively big company, but it's going to be IBM. It's not going to be Google, right? And you say like, oh, well, IBM's still a big company, but it's really not. All right, so if you look at the top 10 biggest companies, um, can I see a normal, like, yeah, okay, here we go, All right? I like, Google's here, and where's IBM? Like, they exist, but they're at 80, and that's what's gonna happen at Google. Like, Google's not gonna keep this spot, uh, because they've made too many decisions that are basically a short term, but a long term, uh, you know, downtrend. And it's actually very interesting to see that Google's the only one here who's down. Uh, I guess this is down a little, but Google's down over a relatively long period of time. Um, whereas who here is going to end up doing well? No, I mean, it's actually crazy, right? And, and both of them are, are legitimately great companies. Um, the top two companies are on a steady rise. The M3, you know, I, 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 like, I can't get over this. It's the fastest, the cheap M3 that you get in a MacBook Air is the fastest single thread uh, CPU in the world. It's beating this. I can buy the whole computer for like, does Apple sell the, what do they sell the cheap one in now? What's the cheapest M3 I can get? They're only in pros. Yeah, $16.99 gets me the cheapest laptop, single threaded performance. It's just wild. Um, I mean, the GPU is quite good also. The, the GPU in this thing is, uh, here, I'll show you. Oh, 
11 gigaflops. I think that's not even tuned for max. Yeah, we can't right now search with the tensor cores. Oh, I put in a bad number. It wasn't a multiple of shit. No, it's gonna take forever. Ah. That's a multiple of shit. Yeah, same speed. Um, let's see, can I do beam on top of that? We'll let it beam search, but the beam search unfortunately doesn't search the tensor cores, but still, I'm getting 11 teraflops. And like, that's a quite a good uh oh, you want to check hash cat yeah i'm not gonna do that that's stupid all right fine just so we can compare it to a tiny box this computer just feels so fast like i can't believe anything made my m uh It made my M1 feel slow. Now oh, I'm gonna have to give it no hip. Uh, so this is an M1 Max, uh, M3 Max. It's the best M3 you can get. I got the high-end Max. Uh, don't buy the lower-end Max because the, they nerfed the memory bandwidth on it. It's not just the cores. My life's in a terminal? Yeah, but the terminal's faster. And that's not true. I, I occasionally use a web browser. Yeah, okay, very, all right, all right, all right, all right. The GPU is not that great. Um, by the way, just, just, to, just to put something in perspective about how much faster your uh, M3 is compared to a tiny box. A tiny box is equivalent to 23 M3 maxes. The streaming's not using anything. What? I mean, yeah, Chrome needs a lot of memory, guys. Chrome Chrome needs the memory, okay? Don't take Chrome's memory from it, okay? Google needs your memory. It's doing ads in your memory. 15K equals 10 M3 MacBook Pros, so you get 23 MacBook Pros of performance. I don't know where you're getting these cheap. Now compare the price of a tiny box to 23 M3 Maxes. Oh, that's a good, that's a good place to leave the stream. If you would like an M3 Max, if you would like this M3 Max, you can purchase four, let's say five, let's round it up because you know about the educational discount. Five M3 Maxes or one tiny box which has 23.5x the performance of an M3 Max. Does it make sense to duct tape 20 M3s? No. No, that never makes sense. Most of the cause is the display. Oh, do they have it in the studio yet? Do they have the, they put the M3 in the studio? No, I think it's still the two. Yeah, still the two. Uh, it doesn't have a touch bar. Apple got rid of it because they learned. By the way, based Apple getting rid of the touch bar, you know? Studio will launch with Ultra. Do you know that or no touch bar is a deal breaker? What's the spec of Tiny Box? Why, why, why do you make me repeat myself? It's here. Uh, it's 128 gigs of C. The working spec is 128 gigs of uh, system memory and a 32 core uh, CPU. It was going to be 16 core, but I splurged a few guys and bought the 32 cores. 
Can I do an outro freestyle? No, because you're not a subscriber. What is that? What is that emote? What's the GLHF pledge? Inclusive. No, no, guys, guys, guys. Again, we're going to leave the stream where we started. I hate wokeism. I don't hate underprivileged minorities because that's not what wokeism is. Wokeism is a cabal of elites using highly refined gain of functioned memes to target the masses to gain more control over society. That's what it is, okay? You got to you got to see through the rhetoric and see the lizard people underneath. No, but it is. It is, boys. It came out of Harvard. It came out of Yale. It came out of Princeton. It came out of Columbia. No, gain of function memes. I stole that from Connor Leahy. Uh, you know, very, very, uh, very good, very good. Um, so you gotta, you gotta realize that with wokeism, man. The trick is not to. You can hate wokeism without hating minorities. Don't hate minorities. That's the trap they want you to fall into. Love minorities, hate wokeism. That's how you win, man. They didn't see that coming. They didn't see that coming, man. They didn't see that coming. You know, they just they they didn't see it, man. They didn't see it. That's right. They didn't know. And don't kill anybody. If you're thinking of killing someone today, make a better decision. I've watched a lot of police interrogation videos. You, you, you're not going to stand up well to the interrogation, man. But, you know, if you do kill somebody, make sure you don't get a lawyer. And make sure you talk to the police so that it can end up on YouTube so I can watch it and be mildly entertained. Uh, because that is the true reality television. There is no truer reality television than true crime interrogation footage. I can't believe this shit's legal. I love America. I love freedom. And I love about half of you, particularly if you're a subscriber. Thank you for watching my stream. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, uh, yeah.